Hello everybody, I'm Jason from Neurodiversity. I'm Karen from Scotty P and Me. It's a collaboration video! It is! <laughs> there seem to be a lot of those on YouTube at the moment. <laughs> so, you know, we're following a trend. Or setting a trend. Or something. Here we go. So, after my last video, Karen here sent me a message with a very interesting comment. Long. And I thought that... It wasn't that long. <laughs> it took me less than a minute to read. If it's, if it's that short, it's not long. Uh, and I thought we'd do a video to talk about it in more depth, because it was really cool. Now, in gist, what was your comment? Okay, let me try and remember. Okay, so you... I don't were, remember. <laughs> you were talking about um, how you thought autism was linked back to the caveman days and relating that back to our roles in society. Mm. And, history. Yeah, history. Um, and then also relating that to um, basically how autism traits are so different with women versus men. Mm. Um, and when I listened to Jason's amazing video, it made me think <laughs> um, along my um, my education training uh, where we talked about nature versus nurture, excuse the dogs. Um, <laughs> That's just the nature chiming in. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was saying to Jason that I feel that would it not be... In my mind it makes sense that um, autism is a genetically based developmental issue um, where it basically comes in through the genes um, and then if you look at that then and you look at how widespread the gene pool is that would give you an idea as to the diversity of autism itself um, and why each one of us with autism yep, um, <laughs> is so unique and have their own individual traits etc mm. and then if you add to that that women have a completely different and unique set of chromosomes compared to a male oh they do and that was where i came in and thinking well maybe that's where the masking comes in um, tied in with the genes. So I'm going to stop talking now and <laughs> let him have a go. <laughs> and, and I found that quite interesting because in the discussion of nature versus nurture, first of all it's been going on for an incredibly long time. I looked it up this morning actually and it's apparently old. the terminology started in the Elizabethan age. Yeah. Um, so that was quite a long time ago. It's a couple of centuries now. Uh, but it's it's interesting because you basically have three schools of thought, from my understanding, is you have the people who think nurture, or the way you're raised, is the most important. Mm. You have people who think nurture, nature, nature, so your genetics is the most important, and then you have people who think that it's kind of a both. combination of both, yeah. and they're both very important. Mm. I and, kind of believe you can't have one without the other, because... No. You're born with your genes, and you, you cannot help what, what outside influences have on you in, in life, that they're bound to have an influence on how you react in Absolutely. life. So Absolutely. So that's my, yeah. In, in different contexts, sort of if we go off the, the autism spectrum train of thought and look at other aspects of genetics, you know, nobody doubts that being born with African-American descent or African descent, not African, you know what I mean, um, affects your life, mm. especially in, in certain areas of the world like the United States. And being born mm. with Maori descent here mm. in New Zealand definitely affects your life. Mm. And when we look at intelligence, you know, we recognize that genetically, parents with higher intelligence tend to have kids that are smarter. Yes. Objectively speaking, artistic <laughs> parents tend to have artistic kids. Uh. You know, we, we recognize all of these superficial genetic traits but then when it comes to disability a lot of the time disability people tend to go oh well it's not genetic well <laughs> i was just thinking it is, it is actually being researched a lot lately and that it is widely known not 
scientifically proved but widely known that it can be seen down the family line mm. um, so yeah and and often in my line of work for those of you who don't know I work with young kids many of whom are disabled or on the autism spectrum or whatever Me too. And, and often what I like to do is I like to look at the parents <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> and you can pick them <laughs> You, yeah, you, you can. You can almost, you know, look at a set of parents and go, your kid's on the spectrum, or probably yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> and likewise, I like work working with young children for such a long time. I can look at a child and go, hello, and just pick up those cues subconsciously. Um, yeah. It's when you're in the know, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, you, yeah. You can. You've we, got, yeah. It's like Gator. I was thinking about that last night. It's yeah, like Gator, but. What would that be? Aspidar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, I did. Me and Kat actually did a video on can you tell if someone is autistic just by looking at you? Yeah. And I reckon you can. You can. If you know what you're looking yes. for. Yes. Um, it's not as obvious as you know, they're from Japan, so they <laughs> have this particular skin color and this height, and whatever. But you can tell. Yeah. You can definitely tell. Yeah, you can. And I'm looking at it from a historical standpoint, which I absolutely love to do. We have proven as a species that both play an incredibly important part. One of the more negative set of experiments done was the Nazis in, in and around World War II. They did experiments on whether or not they could create super children. And so what they did uh -huh. is they, they specifically bred certain sets of parents with the most ideal genetic genetics and got the kids and then they raised them, you know, to be the fastest, the strongest, the mm. smartest, whatever. Most of them died because what they took out of the equation was love, compassion, physical companionship, all the sort of things that most kids get from a standard, you know, interesting family circumstance. Mm. Yeah, and most of them died. And it it was a very interesting experiment that I see one hand on how cruel human beings can be. But on the other, if you look at that, and then you look at the socio-demographics that have the most crime, the most drug use, the highest levels of domestic violence, it's often generational. You know, there's, there's nothing genetically in people of Mexican or Latino descent that makes them more inclined to be part of the drug trade. It's the culture. It's the culture, yeah. which is nurture. Exactly. I mean, genetically, they're a very clever and, and resilient lot, and you combine that with the culture that they have, mm. and suddenly you have very, very good... Yeah, um, business people. <laughs> business people, yeah. When it, when it comes. Not that I'm knocking Latino people or the drug trade <laughs> in general. Um, although Big Pharma could, you know, <laughs> stop. That, that would be nice. But it's interesting. Hey, yeah. It's interesting yeah, yeah. when I look at it. But it was interesting too because I was talking to my husband about it yesterday and um, and I was talking about how I was going to be doing to this, this video with Jason and what it would be about and um, and I said part of my thinking that started this whole progression was when he was talking I was thinking back to very very famous males back in the day um, like Einstein who are widely known to be autistic and my, my thought was well surely he would have to have been successful at communicating to get his, his theories and thoughts out. Now my loving husband who is also great on history, who, which I'm not, told me that he actually wasn't that wonderful at communicating, he was not no, Very he was terrible. At all. Yes, that's yeah. what he said. And so my theory was debunked, but um, <laughs> but that sort of also provoked a, a, a discussion around there's probably not enough history in the world because what we were also talking about was I, well, my husband said that Einstein was not officially diagnosed by a physician. Mm. So who's to know for sure that he had that? And that brought about, you know, how long in history have people been officially diagnosed, which isn't that long. 60 years maybe? If that, yeah. yeah. And then, so, you know, you've got an even lesser 
pool of people to look at to base our opinions on. Mm. Um, but we're in our theories. <laughs> we are, but that, that raises a very interesting point, actually, which I think comes into the nature versus nurture debate. Because people say, you know, Einstein couldn't have autism, or Caesar couldn't have had autism, or, you know, all these people couldn't have it because it wasn't a thing <laughs> before, you know, Hans Asperger did his research and stuff. Mm. Um, okay, so until we found, we as in Europeans found African people in Africa, they didn't exist. Mm. You know, just, you know, polio was a thing before we found out that it existed. Mm. We, another great example of something that is genetic is diabetes. Mm. Half of diabetes, well, don't quote me on my statistics, but one type of diabetes is genetic. We have mm. absolutely proven mm. it's genetic. And it didn't just appear when Frederick Banting and Best, you know, did their research and discovered insulin. Diabetes was the thing long, long yeah. before that. Yeah, yeah. Autism is a genetic trait. Yeah. And and because it's genetic, it has been around for the entirety of human history. Exactly. We just haven't been diagnosing yeah. it. Yeah. You know? And the other thing we were discussing was um, looking at different cultures mm. and how their, their roles of the, the different sexes are, mm. we are they're completely different to what we as Europeans have. You know, would would that do their autistic traits look the same as ours? So in a society where a male is brought up in a way to be the nurturing, the, the role model, the communicator, do they have the same um, traits as we do. That would be a really interesting study. That, and I, unfortunately, we don't have enough data on exactly. autism and its its traits. But interestingly, we have data on lots of other things. One example I'm thinking of is with the LGBT movement and all of these new, you know, genders and stuff that are coming up. And I see the argument that there's only two genders and has been for most of history. And I think that that is ridiculous because actually there hasn't been. Exactly. There hasn't been two exactly. genders. There's been lots. Yeah. You know, in, in ancient Greece, if we're looking at Western culture, there were men who were very feminine. There were men who were very masculine. There were women who were the opposite. There were, um, uh, there was a lot of homosexuality in ancient Greece, really. And if we look at the Eastern side of the things, the first thing that pops into my head, and I can't remember if it's Singapore or Samoa, but there's a thing called a Fafafina. Samoa. Is that Samoan? Oh, yeah. Which is basically a man who was raised as a woman to be a wife. And they were married and they had full relationships with another man as, as the housewife. You know, and, and everything that that entails. Up to and except, obviously, giving birth. Because man doesn't have those bits. But long story short, like, we have the data to show that under different cultural circumstances, the same basic genetic template because every human being is the same basic genetic template with you know within that spectrum you get very different results mm. so we we have that data and we or at least to my satisfaction we've proven a lot of those sorts of things but for some reason with autism you know it must be bad parenting <laughs> or, or it must be vaccines or it oh. must be you know something ridiculous like that taking a deep breath <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry I triggered you um that's another video entirely in it of, a, uh, of itself, yeah. frankly. But it, I find it interesting how single-minded people can get oh, yeah. when, when looking at it. And often I see in the professional world that people will pick this one thing that is the cause of what's going on. For example, if you have a kid with autism who has behavior problems, yeah. then it's bad parenting. You know, the parents haven't been doing this, the parents haven't been doing that or whatever. And when I go in and look at it, I can usually find six or seven other things, mm. and I can go, you know, okay, the teacher doesn't understand him, yeah, yeah. or her, uh, the school, the straight up environment isn't very friendly. The school, uh, the teacher has no training in autism to be able no to training support in autism. Them. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, like there, there's so many different things. Yeah. The diet isn't right, yeah. and the diet won't necessarily be right because the parents are making a bad choice. It's not right because most of the things that we're told about a, pro, a proper diet are actually not good for us. 
like in general as human beings. Fun mm. fact. Mm. And autistic people are just more sensitive yeah. to to those kind of things. You know. But point is, like, you can get blinded by expertise into thinking that there's one cause for this. Mm. And then you focus on it, but you're missing the big picture. And that's where mm. I personally rest with the people who think that both nature and nurture are important yeah. in that debate. Because what we're born with matters. Yeah. It it's like It's like the clay that you pick up out of the ground. And then the nurture is kind of what you make with it. Yep. But you can't make a sword out of clay. At least not a very effective one. You, you need iron for that. Right? So if you get iron and try and make a pot out of it, you're not going to have a pot that's the same as a clay pot. And you're not going to have a sword made out of clay that's as good as a steel one. They're all different. Mm. So if you have a different genetic source mm. combined with, I don't want to say the wrong nurture, but... A different, different nurture, nurture than, yeah. than what it's going to excel at naturally, yeah. you're not going to get the best result for that individual. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is what I see mostly with the education system where they're mm -hmm. trying to turn autistic people into robots mm -hmm. when that's not what we're yeah. built for. Yeah. I know myself, like even before Scott was diagnosed and we have all, all these behavior issues in front of us, you know, the teacher who was clearly not well educated um, in autism, um, you know, would quite clearly point the finger at us. And, you know, as a parent yourself, it's, it's nothing more than devastating. Um, For sure. When you're trying to do the best job you, you, you can and you see what you are looking at or think as a professional, telling you that you're a bad parent and this is why your child's this way you know i mean the amount of parents i still talk to today that are you know waiting to be diagnosed that are having teachers saying you know you've got an awful child well no they don't they, they're just not understanding their yeah. you know there's there's no such thing as an awful child no i and this is what really sold it to me actually in terms of understanding the education system and where it comes from is I sat in a meeting with a Senko who said, and I quote, cruelty is human nature and there's nothing we can do about that. And that's bullshit, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, because it's not. You don't see a one-year-old baby that's cruel. You never do. Because I define cruelty as consciously hurting people knowing that it's painful, whereas a one-year-old is not capable of understanding that other people have feelings. They haven't reached that genetic stage yet, or that developmental stage yet. I tend to disagree, but... <laughs> Excellent! <laughs> Only because I've seen it, but... Um... Let's the debates begin! <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say it's inherent. It's, yeah, it's not a... It's not, again, I've seen it because I think it's been a learned behaviour. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Learned be it's yeah. cruelty is a learned behavior. Yes. We can agree on that. Yes. <laughs> I love it when people disagree. It's debate time. So it's definitely not a genetic trait. Cruelty is not genetic. Um, even anger management issues, as another example, are not genetic. They're learned. There's no such thing as behavior problems. There's communication that isn't being understood. Mm. Absolutely. Oh yes. And and it's yeah. Yeah. Long story short, have we got anything else to say, or have we waffled long enough? I don't know. Um, I mean, there's always more to say. But... I really like that last comment because, as an educator, it really hit the mark. Um, I end up having to say that a lot. Yeah. There's no such thing as behavior problems. There's communication that's not being listened to. Or understood. Or understood. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Or at least always in my experience, and I've worked and or seen mine. or consulted yeah. with at least 200 kids by this point. Yeah. Probably more so with me, but yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I, I haven't found one where there's genuinely no. behavior problems. And no. all the children I've worked <laughs> with over 20 odd years, I've never come across uh, a naughty child. Mm -hmm. There's always been that underlying reason, you know, what, what's triggering that behavior. Yeah. And it's usually around communication or not being understood. Mm -hmm. And once you work those things out, um, you're on your way. Anyway, I think we've kind of got off the track. Um, we, we are, we're about 20 feet off the track. 
We are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right, well, yes, hopefully we have inspired some wonderful scientists out there to do an amazing study on all this stuff that we have provoked. And please think of us when you do so, and we'd like to have a, a lovely sum of payment for this. <laughs> It'd, it'd be great if even you just have a discussion at home and think, how how have our genetics affected who we are? And how has our upbringing affected who we are? Mm. That's what I'd like to see. That yeah. and people to stop blaming kids for being bad. Yeah. That would yeah. be good. Yeah, That's that a would. good start. Yeah. Because, Paying us is yeah. extra. Either, either, either way you look at it, you know, a child is not at fault for their genetics or their upbringing. Absolutely. It's, yeah, regardless, mm. of we, I think we can all agree on that. Absolutely. Cool. All right, we're done. I guess that's us. Bye. Thank you very much. Stay awesome. Bye.